this stuff that is great for your business, but the best is repeat and referrals, right? Yeah, it's following up, staying consistent, and really just being that market expert. I'm Maud Léger, and this is the Realtors Conspiracy Podcast, where we crack the code to real estate success. Learn from top realtors, entrepreneurs, and innovators about how to grow your business as we discuss real estate success stories, mindset, processes, motivations, and the key to their success. Check out our podcast episodes every Monday to crack the code to success for your real estate business. This week, I'm speaking with Aiden Naus from Capstone Real Estate Professionals. He sets himself apart by building relationships with anyone he meets and by consistently following up with his clients. Let's get to my chat with Aiden. Hi Aiden, thanks for joining us on the episode today. Tell us, what is the key to your success? So I can't say to one thing in particular, but the biggest key in real estate, in my opinion, is consistency. Wow. And you got to be consistent every day because it is your own business and what you put in is what you're going to get out of this business. So I truly believe in consistency, staying that market expert is so important, especially with me. This is my fourth year in the business, but I'm 26. So I am a younger realtor. So for me, it's being that market expert, being hungry, and also staying on top of technology because I do work with a lot of older clients and that is where I can kind of set myself aside from older realtors is being good with technology and yeah. being, but also having that experience and knowledge behind me. So yeah, bringing that to the table, being hungry. I like that you said that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, you, you have to be, I mean, there's more realtors than there ever has been. And over the last two years with COVID, we've seen, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's it's crazy how many realtors have yeah. definitely come into the market. So thousands got, more every yeah for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. So I got I got to be on my game. I gotta I gotta stay on it, and yeah, it's just being consistent. So you talk about consistency and being on your game. So what is your day to day like? What what sets you apart on your day to day so personally? Day to day, I always wake up and I try my best not to look at my phone. I believe in waking up and doing something for myself to really get my mind right for the rest of the day. So whether that's waking up, writing, journaling, waking up, doing yoga, moving my body, working out, big glass of water, and then it's sitting down. Okay, let's address what is going on. Because usually I wake up and there's a bunch of messages from people yeah. who have already been starting their day and have already been thinking, right? So day to day, though, it's different every day, obviously. Some days I have showings. The days that I'm not busy with showings, I'm, I'm constantly prospecting. So prospecting is the name of the game. And when you're not busy, you've got to be prospecting because that's going to show in the next three to four months, right? So yeah, yeah. And what you do now impact your life later. Yeah. And at the beginning, I really struggled with that. I didn't it's hard to put in work now when you're not busy because you, you haven't seen that success. But then once you are consistent and you time block prospecting and actually do the things that are going to generate your business in the future, then you'll start to see those, those deals fall into place. So yeah. what would you say your key tips and activities are for pros prospecting? So key tips, obviously the big ones, everyone's, probably door knocked at one time or another i had a previous business where we did landscaping and uh, deck maintenance nice so door knocking was very easy in that aspect because you're going and you're knocking on a door and you have a product to sell that isn't the biggest investment of your life which is a home so yeah. door knocking is obviously a little bit different especially now with covid people are less likely to even answer your door so I moved on from door knocking. I still do door knock if we have open houses. I love to door knock the area, invite the neighbors. It's a great way to get a couple deals out of a listing because obviously they want the highest price for that house. So I'm, it's, it's a win-win in that door knocking aspect. Yeah. But other than that, I do things that I love to do like 
play sports. I'm a big sports guy. So I will literally join random leagues and just say, Hey, put me in as, as a free agent. Yeah. And then I get to meet for volleyball example, for example, I'll get to meet another five to seven people that I've never met that already have similar interests with me yeah. in volleyball. And then it's just being that market expert, right? Like, Oh, just, just probing questions like, Hey, do you, have you guys bought yet? No, I'm actually, we've actually been looking for two years, but we haven't talked to a mortgage broker. And then that's when I can sell myself on top of just being a good human, right? Like go play sports and meet all these people, but you also have to want to grow with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge part that's missing in this business, especially over the last two years, people are money hungry and they want to take advantage of transactions and I'm not a transactional realtor I'm a relationship realtor where I want to grow with my clients yeah. I want them to make as much money as possible so in two to five years when they're ready to move on they they've made a bunch of money and they're going to come back to me and they're going to tell every one of their friends like hey Aiden got us a good deal in this market yeah we want to work with Aiden so no that's amazing having your influence almost like your sphere of influence but it changes because you're changing team mm -hmm. but also being the expert how do you keep on top of the market to always keep being in there mostly so i'm a part of a team so we do weekly team stats new inventory seeing what the market's doing and i mean over the last month the market has completely shifted <laughs> it's it's crazy but just knowing what's going on and telling buyers like, hey, we've been waiting for an influx of inventory like we've seen over the last two months. Now's the time to, to get in. But obviously, it's being that expert because there is a lot of question marks in this market as well, right? So, I mean, Trev and Matrix are a huge, huge and great for stats. So just literally just following what's going on, knowing every listing that comes to our market. I work with a lot in the country and I do a lot of farm properties. Nice. So for me, it's a little bit easier because I'm not, there's a million new residential listings every day versus farms are far and few, right? So it's a little bit different, but I'm also, I also do a bunch of residential. So it's just knowing the areas my clients are looking and being that expert in those niche areas. Nice. I love it. And how do you keep up with technology? You mentioned technology. What do you have processes in place for yourself and for your clients? Yeah, technologies, it's it's just staying on top of it. Instagram's a great tool because you, you're constantly seeing what other realtors are doing and how they're going about their business. So I literally just give and take from other realtors who are successful, right? So it's it's that's been a huge tool for me is Instagram but also just your brokerage know what your brokerage offer and know what they offer for your clients as well because I don't think people take as much advantage of kind of what's within their brokerage right so true true that's a very common thing that mm -hmm. you just join a, a brokerage but you don't actually take advantage of what's exactly. out there yeah for sure. You're part of a team. You're also a second generation realtor. What have you learned from all this mentorship around you in real estate? Yeah, my dad was a teacher and then was also a people person, right? So it was an easy transition for him when he started real estate. And then he had kids and he didn't really want to do real estate anymore. And we lived in a northern Ontario town where you didn't need to make a lot of money to have a good living. So a teacher salary was just fine for him. But what I did learn from my father was that is always have a conversation with people. Like he will talk to anyone. And I thought it was the most annoying thing as a kid. I was always pulling on his arm like, dad, come on, this is enough. Let's go. We've been talking to this random guy that you barely know for 25 minutes, but it was super beneficial to his business because he could, he could talk to anyone. And those people might know someone that's buying or selling, right? So that was, that was, at first I hated it, but now looking back, it's like, I'm trying to talk to the guy in the elevator. I'm talking to the guy ordering the sandwich behind me. Like yeah. I'm talking to anyone and everyone because it's business, right? Now you're doing it and it's part of your success. I love it. Exactly, right? And my, my team actually, one of my dad's friends 
Uh, my principal, his brother, is a really successful realtor in Guelph. So before I decided to do real estate, I called him and sat down with him and said, hey, I'm interested in this. What do you think? And so he's been a great mentor for me. He's, he's old school. He's been in the business 34 years now. So he's been through recessions. He's seen technology change and he's been able to stay on top of it and really kind of show me how to navigate this new life of being a realtor and also be successful at it. Yeah, no, that's true. So yeah. speaking of all this mentorship, what would you say is the best advice you've ever received? Ever received is do things you love and always make the ask. Oh, nice. Okay. So like I said earlier, it's okay. I'm going to golf with three new people that I just joined up on, on the tee sheet. Okay. I'm golfing. That's fine. But it's, it's asking the right questions and making people aware that, oh, this guy's in real estate and making an impression. So they're going to want to talk to you. Oh, next time they see you, they're going to be more comfortable. Like, oh, did you see that house on my street? Do you know what it sold for? Yeah, it went for this. And it's just, it's the ask, right? And asking even with past clients, hey, do you know anyone that's looking to move into your neighborhood? Another house went up down the street from you. Do you guys know anyone that you can put me in touch with? Just yeah. those little things that people find really awkward because asking is awkward, but the worst someone could ever say to you, and this was taught to me when I was young, was no. Yeah. So you might as well ask. And if you hurt a couple of people's feelings along the way, then so be it. I don't want to work with them anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not every client will be a fit. Exactly. Uh, something you bring up that's very interesting is the ask and the uh, talking to everyone. I guess some people might be afraid of feeling like the sleazy realtor who just wants a transaction. Mm -hmm. but as you mentioned, you're more pur purposeful on the relationship side. That seems like that's what worked for you. Yeah, that's huge, right? I'm I'm not pushy and I tell people from the jump like I'm never going to push you in a into a home. Yeah. You can tell within the first minute that someone walks into a home whether they're going to buy it or not really. Yeah. So I know from the jump and houses sell themselves and people are going to be attracted to certain houses and with technology nowadays with eye guide how good pictures are people really are coming to me with houses that they actually want to see for the most part. No, so right. I don't have to be that sleazy salesman. It no. just, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. Cause I don't want feel people feeling ripped off. Number one. Yeah. And like I said before, it's the biggest investment of most people's lives and I want to grow with them and I want them to make as much money as possible. So they take out equity. They can help their kids out. Now their kids are buying off me. So Scott, my mentor, actually, he said that from the jump, he door knocked and he said, I door knocked a hundred homes and you might, you might get one person, but then he goes, that one person bought from me. Then they, their kids bought from me and he ended up, he counted out on his hand, like 20 deals over the last 20 years that he's got from just one instance. Right. Yeah. One so, of a hundred door knock. I love it. That's yeah. Exactly. Right. And I, I hated door knocking and it's very uncomfortable at first, but like I said, the worst people can tell you to do is get the, get the heck off my yeah. lawn. Right? So, <laughs> and then all just right, have a good day, sir. See you later. Yeah, for sure. I, <laughs> yeah. I get it. What would be three key actions that every realtor should be doing to grow their business? Um, following up is huge. Nice. So I just, if you close a transaction, I think following up is so huge and really using your sphere of influence. Yeah. A lot of people will focus on cold calling, door knocking, all of this stuff that is great for your business, but the best is repeat and referrals, right? So three key things are client touch points. Like I, we just, Mother's Day was just last weekend. I dropped flowers off to all my mother's that have been clients of mine right and it's so easy i'm not selling them i staple my business card and i say have a great mother's day amazing right it's just it's just those easy little touch points that focus on your your top top people and you're going to get more business out of it because 
you're you're their guy right so yeah that's super cool can't say exactly three because there's a bunch but yeah it's following up staying consistent and really just being that market expert nice very true and then what is your plan to grow your business where are you seeing yourself or what are you going to put in place coming up um my plan is just keep on staying consistent right so i've been this is going to be my fourth year in oh we are in may so this is my first my my fourth year now and i'm already seeing the benefits i look at it like a tree and the branches are just growing and it's more and more people but it's just okay stay consistent focus on who are your people and your business will just continue to grow if you're still that market expert so yeah. Just consistency is key. And I find myself sometimes not being consistent. So I'll book a vacation mm. and it's like, okay, now I have something to look forward to. And all realtors say, if you're not busy, book a vacation and you'll get busy. So that's, that's been, that's been huge for me. And then it's like week before vacation and all of a sudden my business is going crazy, but that's because it forces you to get back on it. Okay. I have something to look forward to. I'm going to go away, but in the meantime, I'm grinding. And when I come back, yeah. I'm going to feel refreshed and ready to keep on going. But business-wise, I'm happy where I'm at. I love my team. I, I think we're a really growing team. We're adding new agents and we have a great back end. But uh, yeah, just keep growing with this team. And I've, I've moved into farms. Yeah. And I love, I love the, the farming aspect of real estate and I love working with farmers. So I think that's going to be a huge part of my business going forward. And uh, yeah, just staying up to knowledge with farming. There's a lot that goes into selling land and selling farms versus your typical residential sale. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's been understanding that and, and knowing how farming works really and knowing the industry, knowing how people move, right? knowing the type of land they're looking for to grow certain crops. So stuff like that is uh, super important. And it, yeah. it comes back to just being that expert, right? It always is going to come back to that. Keeping the knowledge going. For right? sure. Very cool. Thank you so much for sharing all these nope. tips. Sharing no problem. Tips. Yeah. Where do we find you? At uh, Aiden Naus Real Estate, A I D A N N A U S Real Estate. Um, that's my Instagram and uh, capstonereps.com. Okay, awesome. Yep. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining. If you know anyone who could get tips and tricks from this episode, please share.